Hello everyone. Today we will begin a series of SQL lessons where I will be teaching you SQL basically for beginners and we will slowly move to the intermediate level and advanced level. So we are going to start with um, databases. We are going to be looking at SQL and also we are going to be looking at the career options that are in need of SQL. But before we get into the database in itself, because we know database is about data, but then what is data? Data is basically information about something. Let's say you call an auto mechanic workshop that doesn't have a computer, neither do they have a website, and you want to schedule an appointment for an oil change. You might be asked your name, your phone number, the car make, the brand of your car and even maybe the color of your car and even the time that is you are available to show up to drop off your car you know all these would be recorded in the paper and all this information that is recorded this information is data this is data right there or even with your laptop you connect to your school app and you log in with your username and your password that is data and then maybe you start filling some application forms putting your student's name your student id you know your age and the rest of the, all these are data okay or even you have your mobile uh device and then you connect to facebook to twitter and you are making comments or you are downloading images or you are uploading images or you are creating a post all these are data all these constitute data or even say you have some videos that you have recorded even on youtube just like uh the video you are watching right now you know this is data that is going to be uploaded or that is uploaded on youtube all this makes up what all this makes up data let us look at even more information about uh, uh, a student that constitutes uh, data let's say a student uh, uh, is being asked the student's name you know you have the email address you have the grades you have the name of the school of the student all this is data you have the age of the student you have the class of the student you could maybe be also asked for the height and also the weight of the student of course there are still so many more information you could be asked uh and that, that you could ask um, a student but all this actually makes up what makes up data let us look at another example let's say you go on amazon.com and you are trying to you know to order some items on the website what are the information that have been captured at that moment that you are trying to make those purchases your name is going to be captured because when you registered on amazon or when you signed up on amazon you've probably even already registered with your name right also your username right your username and even your email address all these are data the items that you that you bought the quantity of the items the number of the items as well even the price of the items and also the category of the items all these things are going to be recorded they are going to be captured at that time of purchase all this makes up what makes up data also from the price of the items and the quantity of the items then they will generate the the total amount that all this information that is being captured on the amazon website constitutes data what about let's look at one more example if you look at uh, car information we could have the vin number that's the vehicle identification number you could have the brand of the of the car you could have the model of the car you could have the production year of the car all this constitutes data that all the information that concerns that car you could also have the manufacturer of that car you could also you could also want to capture the price of that car take note all these are data but all this data needs to be stored somewhere right but also before we go into the, the into database let us look at the different data formats that we could have we could have text when you are on your facebook when you are on uh, uh on twitter you are making comments you are making posts all those are text or even as part of your comment or your post you also have numbers that also a data format or even let's say you record uh, a video you want to post it on youtube just like the video you are watching on youtube right now and the host 
of other videos you have watched on YouTube or Netflix. All these are data format. You could also have pictures, images, which you want to upload on Facebook, you want to upload on Twitter, you want to upload on Instagram. All these constitute also data format. It could be audio clips. Also, it could be software programs. If you think of a time when you downloaded, uh, let's say, a photo editing uh, software, and then you downloaded it and then installed it on your laptop or maybe you sent it to a friend you see that is a data some data format right there software program it's a data format as well now let us now go into database now that we have understood what data is in itself because this data needs to be stored somewhere what is database right now database is a systematic or organized collection of data or information that is organized take note that is organized in such a way that it can be easily assessed managed retrieved updated or even deleted and so much more now let's come back let's take some a step back and understand uh, this let's see how the the uh, the, the, the formal ways of we recording information translate into what we are doing right now let's say you want to get some student records remember in those days you get student records inside a file like this which you are going to write with your pen right into uh maybe let's say some a4 uh, paper or something right and then when you have those files what do you do then you store it inside a cabinet as you can see right there but however if you start having numerous uh students what happens you start having thousands millions especially in these days right now we don't do that anymore rather we store it on database that is why if you look at this second point we said that database support electronic storage as a matter of fact database is an electronic storage it stores data electronically on a computer database stores data electronically on a computer and also it helps in the manipulation of the data now the way i want you to think of a database is this think of a database as a warehouse in which case the data table is the filing cabinet is the cabinet so that means you you can have several cabinets inside a warehouse what that means is that you can have several data tables inside a a database and then the files or all the folders that you are seeing right here are then the data right so that means that you have the data inside the data table the data table inside the database so now think of it this way now that you have your files inside your cabinet cabinet inside a warehouse which is why i said that think of a database as a warehouse okay and then the data table is the cabinet which is inside the warehouse and then your files or your folders they are the actual data they are the student data they are the car data or the car inform the car information and you know a whole lot of a lot of other inform let's say medical records of patients all those are also stored in what in databases if you think of all these things all the information you post on facebook where are those posted or where are those living they are living in the database okay now take note that the main goal of a database is to efficiently store data is to efficiently store data and also to return it when requested think of a time when you want to download a particular picture on your facebook on your facebook page so when you click or when you click download that image is actually coming from the database okay now the next question you ask yourself is if we if we are saying that database helps to store data and then it returns it when requested what helps us to be able to do that and that is where the idea of database management systems comes in okay so databases are being managed by what we call dbms that is database management system and database management systems is actually a software program 
that help users or applications to access the databases. It helps to handle the storage, the retriever, and the processing of the data in the databases. Now, think of it this way. Think of it this way, guys. If this is you and you have your mobile app, on your mobile app, you have your Facebook page. You have your Facebook app, rather. And then you are trying to download an image. Let's say a friend's image or something. So what happens is that this is you. You have your mobile app with your Facebook app. And then you click download. At that point that you click download, what is happening is that that your clicking of download is communicating with the database through the database management system so the database management system helps to manage the database so that means that when you click download you are communicating with the database via the database management system and there is also one other thing which i have not mentioned which i'm going to mention now that also helps you to be able to communicate with the database management system and that is what we call SQL, which we are going to also talk more about in the next two slides. Okay. SQL is a programming language, is a computer language that we use in communicating with the database management system, which then communicates with the database. So what happens is that when you click the download button on your Facebook app, that download that you click generates what we call sql statement this sql statement is what then communicate what is being communicated to this data, database management system that then communicates with the database for you to be able to download the image that you were trying to download okay now another case where you could also interact with the database management systems and database is let's say this guy who is a data analyst is working at Facebook and he wants to do some analysis. He needs some data to do some analysis. What he's going to do right here is he's going to write an SQL statement, which is then going to interact with the database management system and then also with the database for him to be able to get the data that he needs to be able to perform his data analysis. So take note, you as a user, you could use your mobile app to generate SQL statement when you click download or you click upload or you click submit button it's going to generate an SQL statement which interacts with database management system and further then interact with the database okay and you could also do that directly if you can write SQL statement you as a data analyst of course you can do that as a, as a data analyst or as a data scientist or even as a data engineer who is working with that particular company is going to write an SQL statement which interacts with the database management system and of course then interacts with the database for him or her to be able to get the information he needs from the database. I hope you guys understand that right now. Now, there are different flavors of this SQL um, this database management system or these databases that we are talking about because they are just think of it as when you have different manufacturers of cars you know you have Honda you have uh, Toyota you have Nissan you know you have you have Tesla so think of it as different you are, in that case you are having different flavors of cars so now you also have different flavors of database management systems or SQL or databases because this relates to the different manufacturer or yeah maybe that's the best word to uh, better word to use right there you know the, the manufacturer or the vendor let's use the word vendor you know that that created this software so you have mongodb you have a uh, oracle database we have PostgreSQL. As a matter of fact, in this series of videos, we are going to be looking at, we are going to be using PostgreSQL. So get ready for that, guys. For those of you that really want to learn PostgreSQL. Another one is Microsoft Access. Another one is SQL Server. Also, IBM Database 2. We also have MySQL. And, you know, and a whole lot of other database management systems. This is just a few 
that I've mentioned. You also have SQLite right there. Okay. Now remember, I in, in in about two slides ago, I talked about SQL. SQL is a structured. It's called structured query language. That is where the SQL comes from. SQL, structured query language. And there are some some people could also call it SQL. SQL. So when you hear someone call it SQL, someone call it SQL, what they are talking about is structured query language. And like I said that for you to interact with uh, with the database management system, you need a language, right? To be able to communicate with the database through the database management system. So this SQL is that language that helps us to interact or communicate with our databases. But of course, through the database management system. So this SQL helps us to store, access, remove, retrieve, manage, and process or analyze data or information in a relational database. Because when you write this SQL statement, then you can tell it based on the statement that you write, then you can tell the database management system that this is what I want you to do on the on the database maybe for me for it to be able to store my images let's say i upload images right when you click that upload button you are you are instructing it to save it or to store it inside the database right if you want to if you click delete then you are saying that remove it from the uh, from the database you are instructing it okay now like i said that there are different flavors of sql take note that each of these flavor as its own dialect it has its own dialect it has its own way of writing those statements but however take note they are mostly similar so what is that what i will advise you is just learn one first okay just learn one first then as time goes on you can learn the other don't go and be learning different flavors at the same time take your time because you are a beginner learn one first so in this series we are going to be looking at postgresql so learn this first and try to master it or at least an intermediate level before you want to start picking anyone take like i said they are mostly similar in most of their syntax okay now an example of a statement of an sql is what i have shown right here select star from students table what we are saying right here when you say star we are saying that select all the columns on this particular table but don't worry if you don't get all this right now because we are still going to be looking at a whole lot of different sql statement which i'm going to be teaching you guys so just stay tuned because we're going to be dissecting all these things okay now one thing i want you now to know is that there are different career options that are in need of sql so what are those different um career options we have software development you have data analytics business analysis data science you want to become a data scientist you need sql data engineering machine learning engineering as a matter of fact data engineering machine learning engineering data science data analyst uh, analyst you really need to you know to know uh sql very well even data warehousing data administration business intelligence engineer you also have web application developer okay you also need um sql and of course there are still a whole lot of other career options that are in need of sql but you know i've not been able to i cannot list everything right here okay let us know in the comment section below what career path you are currently in that is in need of sql or that you intend to transition to that is in need of sql all right guys that is the end of this session we are going to be putting down more videos in this series please stay tuned and don't forget to like share comment and subscribe to our channel for more videos all right guys thank you i'll see you in the next video bye